Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> yes. Everything, everything happens as it happens. And, uh, it, it's up to us with, with the choice, with the, um, ability to perceive. So, uh, we choose the perception point, the vantage point that we want to operate from. So, I just had a video, um, that I did about shamanism. And, uh, There were some gems in there. I I, I enjoyed uh, doing the video, and then uh, at thirty three, thirty four, the uh, the video decided to delete itself. <laughs> you, you gotta love some of this stuff that that happens, <laughs> and of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> three, 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 three to the six to the nine, and then the four. So that's just going to be four. And, uh, you know, we have sure talking about the fours and the forces and the quadrants and the unifications and the uh, interconnectedness. And I, I, Almost gave this channel out recently to to someone, but because of uh just <sighs> too much scattered shit, like it just it just didn't happen, and uh, it would have surprised me if that person even looked into um, pretty much anything that I say, but especially this. But I mean. Uh, if you haven't checked out the channel Mind Unveiled, please, please do so. This is, this is, in my opinion, one of the best fucking video, <laughs> one of the best channels on YouTube. Or, or, or any fucking uh, platform. So yeah, I'll probably touch upon a couple of things I talked about in my last one. Uh, fucking sucks when this shit happens. And I, and I thought about redoing it, um, but but I was like, I, I'm not gonna. It's it's just not gonna be the same because I'm I'm gonna be trying to reach for things in the past, and I'm not going to be in the present moment, um, allowing inspiration to happen um, fluidly and. Uh, spontaneously which which is why uh, how I like to create these videos is uh, having things happen spontaneously and in the moment so that uh, it's very fresh and uh, it happens without not necessarily without much contemplation but it just with, with fluidity and uh, inspiration uh, one of the things I talked about was how uh, I choose my own muse, and so when I do these videos, I choose muses that not just amuse me, but but they they are people who dive down deep and, and get into the core of a uh, what it means to really really feel and be. A human. So I choose. The things I want to springboard off of. I mean of course in life. Like we're going to have our inspiration. Everything is going to potentially inspire us. And, and be amused. And that's going to be spontaneous as well. But uh. But it's really fucking cool whenever we can choose our muses. And uh, YouTube it, it is really cool about uh, allowing us to do that, I think. So even though YouTube's going down the, the shitter, uh, 
it's it's basically um causing the uh awareness that it has uh allowed to happen to dissipate out as is necessary for right now uh in time certain levels of awareness to uh, branch out but uh, this is this absolutely goes into you know is your entertainment actually you know entrainment in indoctrination or are you entertaining yourself with things that inspire you are you choosing your muses or are you allow or are you allowing them to be chosen for you by going along with with bullshit scripts hello and welcome to my unveiled i'm moon and i wanted to take some time today to talk about a subject that's a little bit different than what we normally talk about here but just as elusive and mysterious First, I'd like to thank my friend Olga, who encouraged me to make this video. I'd like to dedicate this to her, as well as myself, and anybody who decides to take value from this. I wanted to do a channel like this for a very long time, but was always too afraid and shy. So it's been a real blessing for Sol and I to be able to share our thoughts with other curious minds. Um, so without further ado, here we go. I admit I've had a hard time finding a way to vocalize this because there are just so many aspects and things I wanted to cover. I fell into the doubt hole and I felt I wasn't ready to write it because if I myself haven't mastered this, then what do I have to offer? I sometimes think that every So, so as per usual, we're probably only, only going to see like um, the, the initial aspects and parts, the intro to this stuff, and then I will be commenting and, and adding and being inspired by it. So, uh, right off the bat, like what she said there, that's something I, I talked about with, with the sh uh, my, my shamanism video that just got deleted. <laughs> got, uh, got canned. But, uh, Essentially, what I was talking about with, with the shamanism is that uh, the person that I, that I was allowing to be my muse at the time was, was talking about um, basically undergoing shamanhood and being a, a professional or... Uh, being able to administer the med ad administer the medicines so uh I kind of disagreed a little bit i mean i i I went into what he was saying and um uh, the layers of what a shaman actually does and what a true shaman does. And, and how they they know when to uh, bring forth guidance and when they know to allow experience to happen and when they when they know to hold space for for the person or people so this kind of uh, brought back those vibes of uh with the mastery and uh before i before i started making any youtube videos also this is uh once again shout out to zen app man because I, I wouldn't have made any youtube videos if it wasn't for zen app man and i feel like that's that's for a lot of us as well i speak for a lot of us uh The mastery thing, um, hmm. this this does hold true, but but it doesn't necessarily necessarily mean that 
there there isn't wisdom to be gained from someone on the path and sharing uh, what they're going through. But the thing that you have to be wary um, about is is someone sharing their experience honestly and with clarity or are they trying to make it seem like they uh, know more than they what they have actually integrated so w with the shamanism stuff that I talked about it's a uh, integration so uh, before the mastery happens we have to integrate and so sharing the process of integration that that can be very healing as well and that can help a great many as well but uh, you, you have to be wary once again upon the intent um, and, and what I talked about before was uh, the, the vibratory state of people the uh, resonance and the uh, tonality, the cadence in the voice, yeah, uh, your your body will respond um, to this to to the vibrations. Your heart will will feel the other person's heart, and and know instinctively where they are coming from what they have truly experienced beyond the words. If they are relying on words or if they are trying to use words to tap into a deeper reality and uh, emotion of what it means to really truly be alive and be a hue man. So uh, this is, you know, I've made videos about this, like, discernment is key, like, yearn to discern your reality. And, and tap into the real. One thing I'm doing is pointless, but then someone reminds me that it isn't. I feel stupid for doubting myself, but have a good laugh. Yeah. Me assuming that someone has to be a master order to be able to teach is stopping you from potentially gaining some sort of value from every experience. Precisely. We compartmentalize our lives too thoroughly. We assume, well, what do they know? It's like saying that you can't learn baseball from your dad because mm. he's not an expert. Like, he's just a dabbler if he isn't signed to the Mets, so you couldn't possibly learn baseball from your father. That, of course, sounds ridiculous to me. We are all capable from learning from each other, even if it's a negative experience. We can transmute that into something valuable. Beautiful. By accepting it and looking at it from another angle. Ultimately, I feel passionate about this, as if I were created to do this. I love to create and talk to people about these topics. Mysteries, people, histories. Every person is a mystery, because a mystery is my story. Yes. I think that it's important for us to inspire explore the mysteries because histories only tell a small part of the story of the world around us and ourselves. We are the world and it grows with us. Our words have very specific meanings. Many everyday normal words are actually compound words, long words made up of smaller words. We cast spells like a net using these words. Each word has its own vibratory spectrum that attracts and repels complementary and contrasting energies. All words and word combinations have a magnetic field. I realized that this means. Oh my god, dude! And fucking Angie, <laughs> that that was for you, cause cause you keep wanting to know about the spells and the spellings, and I've give you links and stuff, and, and I know you you look into it. I know you do. I know you, I know you hear. Otherwise, you wouldn't be out here. So, uh, blam! That was fucking beautiful. These these words and even even letters like encapsulate uh, vibratory states. It's it's a, a level of cymatics that we haven't yet really um, truly understood because each fucking letter 
huh, compounded, compounded, and, and combined in, into uh, to form words. It's just uh, vibrations upon vibrations upon somatics that that we aren't realizing that, uh, what the effect of these things uh, that that we are doing. Uh, we don't realize what we are doing just by simply speaking from, from the language that we have been um, indoctrinated into using. We don't realize the the vibratory states and. Because of this level of disconnect, it goes even deeper into a layer of emotion. Um, people get, people project the frustration and the the one of the tr true root causalities of this frustration is not being able to put the words to the emotions, and so people get frustrated that they cannot uh, commune. As clearly as what they want to, as what they are feeling, and so, like uh, this is uh, one of the main causalities of frustration, and then projecting that frustration, and then once you project a frustration, that it's just probably going to be mirrored back, and then an argument is going to happen, and then most likely, you know, nothing good is going to come of that, unless unless one of the two people or, or who are, however many are able to transmute the emotions and then and then the other people are able to catch on to that so this is a, this is just yet another thing that happens whenever we go into the stillness and meditate and focus inward and dissolve the layers, dissolve the scripts and spellings and words and redefine our, our reality from what we experience directly. This is Gnosis. And the clearer you get within and experiencing directly direct communion with truth and reality and experiencing this without f having the need to form words around your experience then the more time you spend there then you will begin to experience more and more as within so without And things on the outside will just begin to happen. You will have crazy stuff happen in, in your outer manifestations that reflect this inner work that you have cultivated and done inside. Don't take my word or anyone's word for anything. Do this for yourself. And experience for yourself. Know for yourself. sound out there for some people watching, but these breakdowns aren't just people grasping at straws, it's etymology. So you may be wondering, why try and look so deeply into mythology and common everyday words when the real outer world is so messed up? And that's because I think that self-perception has everything to do with our outer world. Mythology and human psychology go hand in hand, I suspect in more ways than just metaphorically. Now, to be fair, this is just this is just my personal perspective on things, and I'm sharing because I feel that someone out there would like to hear this. It's my <laughs> understanding that the world Fuck. that we humans know has a lot to do with our perspective. It's yes. everything. And I think little by little, if we can repair our inner selves, then our outer world will follow quickly behind. Dude! <laughs> I just said this. Like, <sighs> fucking, fucking amazing. I'm just stroking my beard here. <laughs> here, here. Let me, let me uh, allow some ASMR for you with my with my beard here. Oh 
Oh my gosh. So yes, like this is the whole purpose of the indoctrination system because whenever you get uh, the collective, uh, a certain amount of people to believe in a certain thing, then that becomes reality. That becomes the uh, mentality and that shapes the reality. So what we actually are doing is dissolving these illusions, dissolving these constructs so that we can see clearly again and this, so that more and more of us can do so and we're, we're, we're quickly reaching a point where uh, the amount that is needed of people to feel the real again is going to have a, a uh, immense snowball effect and really like it's already happening if you uh, are paying attention but uh, essentially, like we're, we're just going to be witnessing like more and more levels of, of uh, desperation from from the system that is falling away, and that's only going to aid in in, in people waking up to how ridiculous it is. So the system is undoing itself right now because. Uh, it's trying to preserve itself, but in so doing, because of the algorithms set up, it is uh, destroying itself. So congratulations, Google. You, you have uh, done your job. <laughs> and I know that some of you out here know what I'm talking about. When I say that uh, we are creating the astral tubes, because I've been engaging this quite a bit lately, and I'm like, I, I keep backing off from it because I'm like, I I'm creating it and then I'm feeling it, and I, I don't want to do too much <laughs> to, uh, too soon, so I'm just kind of creating space, and this is also something that shamans do is they just allow space and they create space and they hold space for people to experience the things that they need to experience for themselves. So yes, astral tubes, shaman tubes, tap into it because it's, it's already out here. So tap into us. Because we fucking feel it. So, uh, e even if you just spend a moment in, in silence and stillness and feeling, <laughs> we feel it. I went over in my fairies explaining video how this world is electromagnetic in nature. From our daily interactions to our love lives, we use electromagnetic theme phrases to describe these feelings or emotions, electronic yeah. motions. Yeah. For instance, opposites attract, sparks flying when you're with someone, being turned on, and we call it misconduct when someone is treated unfairly, shock at something said unexpectedly, etc. You get it. It's apparent that our thoughts and emotions influence our electromagnetic fields, and these different frequencies create a variety of different effects, like a mandala or a ripple in still water. The mandala effect, and uh, there is no coincidence here in this reality that you uh, exist in and coexist in, and uh, uh, depending upon your level of clarity, You uh, ebb and flow in and uh, swim within or weave in and out in or zigzag in and out of. So, uh, the syntax has, has very much been uh, set up so that um, people's minds go into this uh, simulated reality 
and with computers. create a virtual world and most people live in this kind of virtual world and, and commune within this virtual world of, of the internet and that's not to say that it's, it's bad there's nothing really bad it's just it is what it is and your perception is what chooses uh, or places judgment if you are still into that Or you can just release judgment and see it for what it is. But that takes layers of, of dissolving and, and going into deeper layers to be able to do that. I'm sure many people watching are familiar with the concept of the law of attraction, astrological or elemental influences. You either are interested in this or, you know, you think it's new age nonsense, and that's totally fine. I just wanted to dig deeper into these concepts and delve into the idea of true love for the self. Hmm. Now, this explanation may seem a little occult and might make some people uncomfortable or even irritated. Or it's this very state of mind that prevents us from looking deeper into ourselves and our world. The kind of love that we have for ourselves is the ultimate love. We must learn to be our own best friend, our own lover, our own parent, our own child, and our own enemy. Since we seem to be programmed to compartmentalize thoughts and... And that's like, uh, some, some super fucking deep level shit, like beyond, uh, what, what most people will, will ever really, uh, integrate. So, uh, essentially what she's talking about is, is complete self-sustainability and, uh, also complete awareness of the roles and the uh, potentialities of being a child go going up and growing up into a more not necessarily just evolved but adapted and uh aware state so seeing all the the phases of being a human and transmuting which comes back into shamanism uh, transmuting transforming everything back into the monad back into the center And realizing that you are the center point, you are this spark, you are the awareness. And whenever you can tap into this, you have access to all the perspectives of being a child, of being an adult, being... Everything. Every kind of animal, every aspect of beingness that that is there for you to tap into. So all you have to do is remember the access codes. And this starts with remembrance of learning to sit in silence and integrate the stillness to listen within the stillness. To integrate the deeper levels, the deeper meanings and oftentimes for a lot of us it is a process and We are going to cycle in and out of these these states, and, and that's to each their own. I mean, everyone's going to have their own path towards this, uh, towards truth and clarity. So there's no right, right or wrong paths necessarily. It's just it's something 
good or is something better or is something best or to, to help you there? I want to break down this idea into five roles. I will also relate these parts to the five elements. L. The L's. One, the best friend. The mentalist. The best friend part of us is the aspect of us that is just the most fun to be around. It's the us that we hang out with when we're doing our passion, mm. whether it's some sort of art, sports, music, or just chilling and relaxing. It's the us that echoes in our head during these states of mind, concentration, and meditation. In this way, they keep us grounded, and I like to relate this to the earth element. Two, the lover. The lover part of us is the part that motivates our desires. This is the part of us that reminds us of our own beauty and uniqueness. They are our naked and natural selves that understand the most intimate parts of our minds, bodies, and souls. We spend time making ourselves look good for the lover part of us. Mm -hmm. This is the part of us that lights our motivational forge. They drive us to be better people, and we want to impress them. Fire is the element I chose to attribute this aspect of ourselves. Yes. Three, the enemy. The enemy part of ourselves is one that I think people these days spend most of their time with. Yes. This is a complex and seemingly necessary part of us. This part can be a prankster, an unyielding teacher, a relentless bully, an abuser, prankster. a killer, and at its worst, a friend in disguise. This part exists to get in our way and to knock us down at the, inc at the most inconvenient times. Loki. To me, this part exists to bring us down to remind us to be grateful for the high times. Maybe it's That's what I'm talking about when I'm reminding of humbling yourself. So that there, there is an aspect of that uh, within within everybody that that um, you know within uh, the purest aspect of like you know uh, people trying to bully someone is, is this is what 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 we are really trying to get at is uh, a purification of the uh, essential essence. So like uh, like right here like. Uh, <laughs> you know, iron sharpens iron, or, or whatever the fuck this saying is. Steel sharpens steel. But, uh, yeah, so like, having a, a clear mind state, and then engaging in, with, with another clear mind state, and engaging in a way where you are challenging, but, you know, it, it, it's in a manner that essentially like is a benefit and you're not trying to seek destruction so like it's always a balancing act with with this so whenever you can really balance things inside of you then you can truly engage with uh extremes on both polarities and and instantly go back to the center point Whenever, whenever things get too uh, out of hand, and and then you can regroup and then start again. But whenever you can get engage um, with with an extreme emotion or extreme uh, mindset with someone, uh, if, if you can maintain a certain level of uh, balance, then. Some magical stuff can happen. Necessary. But perhaps it's an enforcer of perspective. This attribute is seen as the element of water, as it can drown us, pull us under, fill our lungs, and kill us. Yet we choose to consume small amounts in order to quench our thirst. 4. The child. The child part of us must not be forgotten. In the modern day, we use the word child as an insult when we want to call somebody foolish or stupid. Yeah, right? As a result, many of us have separated ourselves from the child mind in an attempt to come off as mature and intelligent. Yet, most of us still watch cartoons, play games, dress up, and collect toys. And there's a lot to that. We won't get into it here. Um, the attack on the child mind, I've mentioned it before. But uh, this... this fresh perspective of seeing things as new and, and alive like that's that's what is directly being attacked by this indoctrination system 
and encapsulating a dead matrix a dead end matrix they're trying to dead end your mentality and your thought instead of having a childlike mindset state where your thought is ever flowing and free and it's always looking towards a, a new perspective and perception and always constantly creating a new reality but is that what defines a child would a child still be a child without those things of course being a child is like the childlike the childlike state of wonder and curiosity at ourselves and our surroundings in this state we question everything and imagine freely this part of ourselves is wild and free and lives in the moment yeah. I think air is the appropriate element for this aspect, as air is what we need most immediately mm. for water, food, shelter, or clothing. Beautiful. Being without air is the quickest way to death. Without our inner child, our spirits too quickly pass away. Beautiful. Number five, the parent. The parent part of ourselves is just as important, and I attribute it to the fifth element, plasma. Oh my gosh. It is the of life giving. Yet, this part of ourselves is another one that people struggle with. In the physical oh my world, God. parents are just normal folks with kids. Unfortunately, many people didn't spend the time figuring themselves out before having children. Oh my God. And I didn't watch this part yet, but like, she just went from fucking. Oh my God. Parent and plasma. Like, are you kidding me? Realization of the plasma like state. Uh, be, beyond the, the liquid and the air and, and the fluidity and, and, and coming into the plasma and the uh, the ability to not just integrate because after integration comes sharing and so the parent is supposed to share and help the child to integrate, but also allow. The parent is very much like the shaman. The parent is the ultimate shaman, okay? And I just now, uh, that's the first time I ever said that or realized that, really. The parent is the ultimate shaman. Wow. So now I realize why that video got deleted. That's so that I could realize this. <laughs> oh my gosh. The uh the inner standing of the childlike mind state and the knowingness of how to guide but also how to allow a being to experience for themselves. Shaman and parent. Oh my god. So fucking beautiful. For one reason or another. And I understand that no parent is perfect and mistakes are bound to happen. But there are many people in my generation at least whose parents didn't care for them how they needed to be cared for. They may provide food and shelter, but a large number of people with children don't maintain their relationship with them, with their children or themselves. Yerp. Much of the time, children are doomed to repeat the actions of their parents, becoming a near carbon copy. It takes a level of perception not taught in schools to be able to learn from the mistakes instead of repeat them. This has caused many of us to have to learn on our own how to take care of ourselves financially, emotionally, or spiritually. All this learning about. process can be difficult, especially with the distractions of the modern age. It seems like we beat ourselves up for simple mistakes, there and we then when we've done something really self-destructive, we congratulate ourselves. We don't know when to be stern or compassionate with ourselves. Imagine a parent like that. We turn our noses up with the idea of a parent who allows a child to drink booze and hang out with shady people. Yet then we turn around and have a drink with that person who always gets us into trouble. Many of us don't even feel in control of ourselves or our lives. Life feels surreal as if we're the passenger in the seat of a car mm. that's going who knows where. 
maybe nowhere. I realize that a lot of people who roll their eyes and scoff at this type of introspection are the same kind of people who depend on pills to even out their mood. Like petulant teenagers, we would rather swallow some designer pill to make us happy instead of spending our precious time looking inside of ourselves to figure out the problem. We are constantly stressed about how little time we have because we have to work two jobs in order to fund our pills and our psych sessions that make us feel a little bit less crazy some of the time. Most of the time, we just continually up our dosage, thinking that that's the next step in our recovery until the day we... Well, yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing, uh, once we you become addicted uh, to a certain substance, is. uh you you need more and more of it because your body naturally adapts and seeks homeostasis. It wants to heal, but but the problem is the mentality and allowing yourself to heal. So, uh, this is fucking beautiful. I'm definitely gonna give a link to this uh, video. This person is fucking beautiful. Um, I could just stare into her eyes. I can't, oh my gosh. And I'm not coming from a place of like lust at all. And actually, like, I've been really, really diving down deep into like, I'm having deep experiences with, with lust and, and what it really means. Like, ultimately, like, Seeking lust or seeking like an eternal relationship with with love, um, a, a cultivated awareness of um, a deeper level understanding of of love, and, and where lust comes into play with that, which is just very surface level stuff. So looking into the eyes of some people. Like with this person, they pierce into your soul, don't they? Uh, the clarity and perception, the awareness, it helps remind you of that within you. So yeah, I'll show the card that I drew now. And I've also been having a lot of uh, interactions with, with people, with females who remind me of this level of awareness. And uh, once again, I'm left with Thoughts and feelings and um, desires. What do I truly desire? What do I need um, in order to bring about what I truly desire? Which which is well beyond lust. Well beyond. Um, any carnal desire, but it is a uh, recognition of what is needed in order to uh, harbor and be true to a uh, deeper level of understanding of what this deep level love is. And a lot of times, we have to experience it first before we realize that we're not ready for it. And then that's why a lot of people um, don't uh, stay together, really. Or there's a lot of divorces is because they realize uh, ultimately um, that they are not ready to stay true to a deeper level of love. So uh, this is what I seek.
beyond um, just hooking up or beyond lust. Lucy the spider. <laughs> yep. Lucy in the sky. So what we got is Keywords, greater connections, the web which ties us all together, communications, when the spider cut appears, in a reading, look for ways to build connections, helpful communications are especially favored at this time. The spider is hailed around the world for its miraculous ability to weave webs. As such, it serves as a symbol of that which ties us together as a whole in the universe. Among the Pueblo Indians, the spider is honored in the form of a powerful deity known as a spider woman. Spider woman who was believed to have created the world through her spinning in West Africa. Numerous tales are told of Anansi the spider. Ooh, how very synchronistic. A trickster figure who ultimately benefits mankind despite his antics. Loki. Today, the spider's web has gained a new connotation with the creation of the World Wide Web, which serves to connect all of humanity through almost instantaneous communications. Oh, how very uh, coincidental, right? No, no, how very synchronistic that I was just talking about all that. The webs that we weave, the uh, connections that we continue to strengthen, what we're uh, remembering how to tap into um, the inner realms to where we are able to um, have instant communication uh, no, no matter the distance and I, know, and I know a lot of you right now know what the fuck I'm talking about because I know that you, <laughs> you have experienced this with me because you've told me you have but also I can I feel it So yeah, this is just going to continue to grow and snowball. Uh, there's no stopping this. You, you can you can shut down the fucking internet, but <laughs> the web is already there. Like, uh, good luck shutting that down. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to this. It's gonna be interesting. coming into uh, the year 2020, or what we are told is the uh, collective inspirations and aspirations and awarenesses coalescing right now is uh, 
They're very magical. So try to stay tuned to the magic and to the beauty. And uh, if you're going through hell at these times, uh, know that you are not alone and know that there is a collective hell happening right now. So there's, there's a great many going through a great deal of trials and tribulations and you are by no means alone so keep diving keep continuing in your path and you will find your way back into integrity and homeostasis and truth and harmony and essentially eventually into a mentality of what the reality of eternity really means and that we are all already there I love you. Peace.